Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 11 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on drives. So let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 11 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so here's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna go over the compatible drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. We're gonna show you the max speeds, max sizes. We're gonna show you how to physically install, which is super easy because they're hot plugins. And then at the end, we're gonna show you two testing tools we like. One of them will be HPEs and one of them will be HD Sentinel. And what we do with HD Sentinel is we will actually Actually hook it up to a storage array and we can test drives in bulk and be able to uh, test the health scores, uh, see the uh, the general life, how long it's been uh, running, if it's actually new. And it's just a nice tool that we like to use. It's a secondary tool outside of HPE. And before we ever put drives into a live production environment, it's one of the things that we always do. And of course we do for anything that you buy from us in advance. So, all right, let's go ahead and hop in. All right, so let's go over the different compatible drives. So you have SATA hard drives, SAS hard drives, SATA SSDs, SAS SSDs, and NVMe SSDs. So there's five types of compatible drives to start. And again, this isn't talking about M.2 or PCIe, which would be some other ones that you can add in there as well. All right, so let's start with the hard drive side. Well, on the hard drive side for SATA, your speeds are gonna be 7.2K RPM. That's just what you're gonna get at 7.2K RPM. Technically, there's some kind of uh, old school drives out there that are your Velociraptor drives that I'm sure would probably work and you know maybe run up to 10K, but 7.2K is the primary dominant thing for SATA. And technically, there's even some uh, 5.4Ks out there that are for, for surveillance that I'm sure would probably work for this as well. But again, 7.2K is the dominant thing for SATA. So for SAS, you're gonna get more options. You're gonna get 7.2K, 10K, and you're gonna get 15K. And again, this is talking about SAS hard drives. And the nice thing about SAS hard drives is they're faster. Uh, but one thing I always say is if you are buying used SAS hard drives, you gotta be a little bit nervous. And luckily this is a Gen 11, so everything's gonna be brand new. But with used SAS hard drives, because they are so fast, they're going 10K, 15K, the ball bearings will wear out over time. And so it's just something to be wary of. If you've been using a SAS hard drive for you know three to five years, you might want to consider keeping a spare because very likely that it will fail down the line. So, all right, now the speeds for your solid state drives. If you use a SATA solid state drive, you're going to get six gigabit per second. If you use a SAS solid state drive, you can get up to 12 gigabit per second. And if you use an NVMe solid state drive, you can get all the way up to 16 gigabit per second. And I did want to note real quick, since we are talking about NVMe drives here, uh, make sure that your system is set up to be able to use NVMe. Uh, not every Gen 11 is set up to be able to use NVMe. So that is an important note uh, going into it just to make sure that your backplane is set up for uh, NVMe. So, all right, those are the different speeds. So what about the max sizes? Well, the max sizes depends on the type of chassis you have. You can have a small form factor, which is a 2.5 inch drive, or you could have a large form factor chassis, which is a 3.5 inch drive. So depending on uh, what type of uh, chassis you have will depend on the max sizes. So let's talk about small form factor since that's what's in front of us right now. So with a small form factor, the largest you can get with SATA is only two terabytes and only 2.4 terabytes with SAS. I'm sure someone will probably drop a comment down below and say that they can actually use something a little bit higher, but that is what is on HPE spec sheet and that's the highest you're gonna get. That's the big downfall of hard drives that are just SATA hard drives on a 2.5 inch side is you can't really get a whole lot out of them, they're not fast, uh, and you can't get large um, uh, capacities. Now, uh, on the flip side, when you go to a large form factor hard drive, you can actually get uh, 18 terabytes for SATA or 18 terabytes for SAS, according to HPE spec sheet. We've actually played around and put in 20 terabytes for SAS and for SATA hard drives on the, again, the 3.5 inch large form factor side. And so that is the nice advantage of large form factor. You can stuff in a lot of storage for much, much cheaper than the small form factor. Now let's talk about about solid state drives. So for solid state drives, uh, they're technically gonna be 2.5 inch, but you can put them in to a large form factor system or into a small form factor system. You just do need a converter. So uh, on our website, when you go to order, uh, we will have the 3.5 inch tray with the converter uh, so that you can get the whole kit together just to be able to pop it right in and plug it in and not have to worry about it. Uh, but we will have that on our website available. Um, so with the small form factor or large form factor solid state drives, you're gonna get seven. 0.68 terabytes for SATA solid state drive, 
15.3 for NVMe and SAS. So that's the advantage for NVMe and SAS. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to install these, which again is gonna be super easy because they're hot plug-in. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to work on the machine. So first things first, uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove one of our blanks, which are great for airflow. So we're just gonna pull this thing out. And sometimes they do get a little stuck, but we'll just pull this right on out. And now we are gonna simply install our new drive. So we are going to have this part up. We're just gonna slide it in. And this is very simple. As soon as it gets in, you just push it in. That's it, that's how simple it is. So now if you wanted to remove it, you just push your button right here, it pops up and you're just gonna slide it out. Now I will say with this design, one of the things I have noticed is that sometimes the drives do get a little bit stuck and they feel kind of flimsy on the, bra the bracket to be quite honest compared to even some of the older generations. So I'm kind of careful when I'm pulling them out because they do just feel uh, a little bit lighter and they do seem to get stuck a little bit and that's one of the issues I've noticed with it. Not a big deal. Um, it's a tight squeeze in here overall and you want a tight squeeze for good airflow and making sure that you're not leaking out air. But again, that's one of the things I've noticed when I'm pulling them out sometimes they do get a little bit stuck so just know that just be kind of careful you might just have to wiggle a little bit and pull it out but it's very simple overall and again just pop it right in so uh, that's how you do it so now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to actually test your drives using hpe's tools and using a cool tool we like called hd sentinel all right, so what we're gonna do now is show you how to test your drives. And really this is gonna show you how to test your ProLiant Gen 11 server as a whole. What we're gonna do is show you how to run an embedded diagnostics application. Now this tool is already integrated into your firmware and it's a very, very useful tool to help you check and verify that the hardware is functioning properly. So first things first, turn on your server. During boot, you're gonna press F9 and you're gonna access system utilities. This will take a couple of minutes for your server to finish initializing, so just know it might take a few minutes uh, to be able to get into the system utilities. Once you do get to the system utilities page, you're gonna scroll down to the embedded applications options, press enter, a starting devices message will appear, let it load, it'll take a couple of seconds. In the embedded applications page, you're gonna scroll down to embedded diagnostics, press enter. This is gonna take you to the server hardware diagnostics UEFI application. Scroll down to the systems test option and press enter. On the systems test page, you're gonna have three different test options, fast test, regular test, or extensive test. For the sake of this video, because we don't want to waste anyone's time, we're gonna do the fast test option, but I do recommend at home doing the extensive test option. This is just gonna be a little bit more in depth and make sure again that all your hardware is functioning properly. So in the system fast test page or whichever test you chose, you're going to click run once. This is gonna start the test. Now do note that the test can take a couple of minutes or even up to an hour plus, depending on the amount of memory you have, the amount of drives and just your hardware as a whole. So do note that this can take a little bit of time to run the test. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now. And as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead, plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. And like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. All right, you've done it. You've successfully tested your drives and your server as a whole. Do us a favor, if you found anything that helped you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built servers, we do HPE, Dell, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, Whitebox. We do new and we do use, and we also do spare parts. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com.